my mom is a good cook, but when I was growing up, <laughs> I don't want to be in the kitchen. There, so you can, your camera ready now, honey. People come over to my place, think it's Disneyland, because there's so many toys, and part of that's because I'm not married. If I had a wife, she'd probably say, get this out of here. I'm joking. Whenever I have Filipino food, Whenever I make it, it always makes me think of my grandma. I feel like she's with me. I moved here in the 80s. Every day, I was praying to Navina, please take me back home, because I didn't like it here. Tastes like a double. Adobo is, is a regional thing, uh, so it depends on what region you're from, what province you're from. Oh, I'm, I'm from Manila. My father's Ilocano and my mother's Visaya. We're from Mindanao. There are so many different styles because the Philippines is comprised of so many different islands and different, you know, different types of food. My uh, chicken adobo recipe is mainly a bunch of garlic. Normally I use chicken, put the soy sauce and vinegar in, apple cider vinegar. Lots of ground, uh, fresh ground black pepper. I'll put some bay leaves in there and then I'll put the onion on top. I use the Thai, soy sauce, the coconut vinegar, garlic, brown sugar, and bay leaf, and uh, black peppercorn. I like to mix up pork and uh, chicken. I love it with potatoes. Yellow onions, cider vinegar, pickle spice, brown ginger, soy sauce. I like to use olive oil, chicken thighs. I've got bay leaves there, vinegar, and some soy sauce, low sodium, add a little bit of salt, pepper here, and onion. I like a lot of garlic, and the reason I smash it is because it's to let the flavor off more. Pork loin just makes it um, more tender, I think. I always use my seasoning, black pepper, bay leaf, soy sauce, and your vinegar. And I put quite a good amount of sugar. I don't know why I do this, but I do this. Traditionally, people would use um, the fresh garlic, but I'm lazy. We just let it cook on one side and then there's some of that fat and chicken fat is, is good anyway because it's got a lot of flavor. Yeah. My father uh, was in the army and we moved from the Philippines to Okinawa where he was stationed. And from there, we immigrated uh, to uh, San Francisco when I was about seven. And uh, we, he was transferred to um, Albuquerque, New Mexico at the base. And even though my father was in the service, we, we all went to public schools. It was difficult learning English. People were not as accepting of people of color. I basically learned English, not from a school teacher, but from the librarian, because I would, um, I was getting in trouble so much in class uh, because I didn't understand what she was saying that I spent most of my time in the library where the librarian was the one that taught me how to speak English and basically learn to read. I remember my, uh, third grade teacher was so frustrated with me that she would tell me to sit under her desk. 
because <laughs> she did she didn't know what else to do with me. Basically, to add that, cause it's like it's not adorable unless you crunch into those peppers, even though it's annoying sometimes. My father served in uh, the U.S. Army um, during World War II. That's actually how he earned his American citizenship. He had been a, an American citizen. My mother wasn't. So uh, when uh, they got married, he was able to bring her over uh, and um, raise a family. Growing up in Santa Maria, uh, it was great. Going to school, the nice, great thing, especially in this day and age, is I grew up with a, a mix of friends who, of ethnic background. After I graduated from college, I started auditioning for shows. It was the first time I uh, got really self-conscious about my looks. Before that I never really cared. When you start going out on auditions and you start learning about the scripts you read and, and the plays they're, they're casting, then I started to get a little self-conscious about being Filipino and how I looked. Some people ask me if I'm gonna audition for some classic play. I will joke saying, well, I doubt it because Filipinos didn't exist back in 1950. So my dad is Filipino and my grandma um, would always cook Filipino food while I was growing up. Growing up, there weren't really Filipino restaurants or Filipino markets or anything that I knew about. Um, so I never even heard uh, the Filipino accent until I left New Mexico and went to uh, Arizona State for college. So uh, whenever I heard that, that accent, it always made me think of my grandma immediately because she's the one who I associate that with. The only Filipino family that I knew was my own. Um, so I felt, I felt kind of lucky in that way. Like we were, it was special because I had that, that culture, those, those influences in my life. My grandparents are such, they were such courageous people and strong people. And they, they lived through World War II, the Bataan Death March. What they did to, to get the family here to the States is just amazing to me. And I just feel so blessed to have had that influence growing up. I'm gonna uh, separate the Jews. That's our second language in the Philippines, English. The teacher talks in English. There's even one time when I was in the elementary, the teacher said, okay, uh, you have to speak English because if you speak Tagalog, our language, we're gonna fine you 25 cents every time. <laughs> so we have to, <laughs> to try and speak English. We were like teenagers. The, rebels attack. We didn't know the rebels are going in the town. They were telling us that we have to move out the house. My mom and my dad took all the important papers. They went to our store and took all the canned goods, put it in the sack, the rock, sack rice, and carried. We all had we didn't bring any clothes. Well, what we have is my pajamas. <laughs> the rebels were on the street fighting with the soldiers. What we hear is all shot uh, guns and bombs. And, and all of a sudden, we knew that our house was burned and everything was gone. All the civilians went out with white uh, handkerchief, like we did a flag. It's like uh, telling the rebels that we are civilians. And then waited until the American ship took us and went to other place that is safe. I hesitated to come here till until you know, basically immigration says, hey, we gave you that opportunity. If you don't want to take it, we'll, we'll give it to somebody else. And, and basically kind of just basically forced to, to come here and live. Growing up, you have your set of maids, not just one. You have your set of maids, you have your drivers, 
you wake up, you come down, and your uniform for your school is ready, washed, pressed, breakfast is ready, driver's waiting, you get driven to school. Now, and then they, from that kind of lifestyle, to bring you here, and you live in an apartment, and you don't have a car, and you have to take the public transportation, it was a big culture shock. It was such a culture shock for me that I cried for a whole year. <laughs> I literally did. I didn't want to be sad anymore, and, and now you gotta, you, you gotta live here. When I moved here, school was easier. I was number eight out of 358, I think. I probably would have been so different if I'd lived my teenage life and, and experiences in the Philippines, but I don't think I would, I would um, change it one bit. I always try to make my Filipino food as close to the way that grandma made it. But it's nice when you are able to participate in shows where you have a lot of different ethnic types. I have lived here all my life. I still have the Filipino culture. I, I was raised that way. It's so better here. It's safe and yeah, we like it too, right? And I try to keep culture still within me and in traditions somehow and still keep that little bit of Filipino in me which I still do I, I have you know I love being Filipino <laughs>